W H Y D. Let me let me tell you something right here. Let me ask you something. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. Remember, at one point in the long distant past, yes, we have dabbled in those. But like I told you, I've already been honest with you. I invested in all this stuff. You don't think I know that there's people a thousand, maybe a million times smarter than me? You don't think that they know how to program and write codes and do all this garbage a thousand times better than anyone? Hello? Even I know this. This is why I'm going to let you know what investing means. Do you know what Vault 7 actually was? Does anybody know what Vault 7 actually was other than the fact that it had all these programs and stuff in there? Let me let me help you out with this with this special word. They're called tools. Do you know what tools are? Hello, this is the whole point of people who develop those tools because other individuals like myself who know that there's other smart people out there who can develop those tools, but there's also people who know how to use those tools. Chimps learn this skill when they're very young. Even two-year-old Fanta can do it. Watching the chimps using sticks to termite fish makes it easier to imagine the leap from making tools to fashioning weapons. That's the innovation that has put the spotlight on this remarkable group of chimps. And it's something that until now, only humans were supposed to do. You see, the significance of that is to show you that even monkeys can use tools. Hey, let me ask you something. Why do you think you keep tools locked in a toolbox or why are they why do you keep tools inside the toolbox oh yeah that's right because if those tools were to get in the wrong hands that's right you guessed it they could either create or destroy things that is why you don't leave tools just lying around that's why you lock those tools up let, let me tell you something how smart the, the person who invented the hammer was pretty smart but how smart does it take to actually use the hammer? You, you see what I mean? You see what I mean in this whole scenario of what I'm telling you right now? It, it doesn't take a super hacking god to do anything. No, you just need the person to develop the tools and you can distribute those tools among the masses. I mean, how does, how does nobody notice this? How does nobody not see this? How does nobody realize that this is how reality actually is? It's beyond unbelievable. I'm going to go into the scenario later because I'm, I'm going to respond to something. Google admits to altering Android iPhones. Okay, this isn't a shock to anybody who knows what, like, rooting is and stuff like that. Like, hello, they blatantly let you take control of that phone if you are smart enough. Or can go pick up a YouTube channel. You saw six-year-olds root their Android phones. Like, you're kidding me right now. This is unbelievable. You realize all these people... Let me help you understand something. I know I'm not a hacking god. I'm not admitting to you I'm a hacking anything. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that there's terminologies out there. There's a way that these people are acting. They're under... They're pretty much engaging in a constant evil mate attack. Think about it. They have all the access to the programs and everything. They're always at the computer desk... You give them your trust that they're not going to invade your system and change and do whatever. But that's all ethical problems and stuff like that. Hello, they're all disregarding the ethical boundaries of what all this means. They're, they're pretty much engaging in malicious cyber warfare. What do you think that zero dawn warning I was telling you about is? Hello, that's a real thing. It's called zero day. Hello, it's unbelievable. This is what these people are engaged in. They're just waiting for the moment. This is what the warning is. Now I have to blatantly just come out and tell you. Because everything is on fire right now. Everything is burning to the ground. Unbelievable. Nobody knows. Does anybody know how a party system works? Nobody knows how a party system works, do they? You see one tank. You have three DPS. You have a hailer and a support. You know what's happening right now? Why do you think it's like this? This is all personality based for a reason. Only a certain portion of society knows how to take. Only a certain portion of society knows how to heal. Everybody wants to be DPS. And you know what's happening right now? Nobody's doing their roles. Everyone's all over the place. And when everyone's all over the place, the party falls apart. You have the tanks wanting the hailers to tank. And you have the hailers. Uh, 
throwing down and, and saying, why? We're not supposed to be tanking. Hello, you're supposed to be tanking. We're supposed to be hailing and supporting. That's not how this system works. And then you have the DBS that are not even concentrating fire. They're just spread out everywhere. Unbelievable. Like, this whole party system is failing. And you wonder why our country is just coming to the ground and coming completely unglued right now. Unbelievable. This is how... The closest way I could relate it to reality of like how this whole life force, how this whole, you know, I guess community, society of our planet works. Some people tank. Some people support. I know my role. I already know I'm a hailer. I'm a supporter. There's other people out there who know that they're a tank. But you know what? They're not fulfilling their role as a tank. They're not doing their job. Because for some reason they don't have faith in the healers or something. That's, that's what's happening right here. Anyone could DPS. Everyone wants to be a DPS, but it's always the DPS that and they never know what to DPS. That's the problem. They're just out there always DPSing, but they don't know what the hell to DPS. It's just unbelievable. It's so frustrating trying to deal with this, you know? We need leaders. We need commanders out there. This isn't a game. If you didn't know about this already, then you're in for a treat. If you did know about this, well, guess what? I'm spilling a secret right now. So here we go. Stignography. How many of you actually know what stignography is? It's the practice of concealing a file, message, image, or video within another file, message, image, or video. The word stignography combines the Greek word steganos, meaning covered, concealed, or protected, and graphene, meaning writing. You know, this term was first uh, in 1499. You can go read his stegnographia, whatever. Alleged uses by intelligence services. In 2020, the FBI alleged that the Russian Foreign Intelligence Services used customized stegnography software for embedding encrypted text messages inside image files to certain communications and Russian agents. All right, I'm going to let you know a secret. You want to know why that 2010 date is very important? Remember how I was telling you all throughout the past, back pre-2000s and everything before that? I'm sure everyone is familiar with, you know, image boards. Oh, now I bet you're starting to see image boards in a whole new light, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Hey, welcome to the first gate. How about that? How about that? I just gave you all this one for free. Welcome back to about 17 years of knowledge I just gave you for free right here. If you had no clue whatsoever. An image board. Ah, uh, it's a type of internet forum which operates mostly via posting images. The first image boards were created in Japan and inspired the creation of a number of English language image boards. Oh, they sure did, didn't they? And you know those those Japanese over there, you know they love their tech. You know they love their secrecy. You know they love anything that enhances the human mind, which is why they have this the complete honor to breed themselves into extinction. Notice how America has a problem and wants to flood their culture and destroy their society, but think about their society, that mindset, you know, like they're... So willing to extinct themselves just to preserve their culture. Like, that kind of mindset, that kind of conviction right there is what people need to understand about the enemy you're dealing with. The enemy has the same conviction. When they go into that, uh, that forest and they worship that owl in his leafy temple, they are fully invoking that conviction. When they plot inside jobs behind the scene, and they run these scams upon the whole nation, they are using that conviction just like any other enemy that we've dealt with in our society or we have met before. But yes, go ahead. Go try to entrance yourself in the world of puzzles, in the world of the mind, in the world of secrets, in the occult. Remember, alchemy, what did they use? Images. All the words are right there in front of your face. It's truly un all the secrets right there in a stenographic 
form. You just need to know how to read it. It's just like any other language. If you can't understand it, what's the point? Best sushi last night. The fish was so fresh. It was right out of the ocean. Uh, fresh fish, there's no taste. It's just chewing, just hard. And uh, people think, oh, fresh should be good, but it, it wasn't. Yasuda's menu changes constantly with what he finds You know that food reference before. I'm going to give you the full story now. I, that Anthony Bourdain scene, I have lived it. Oh, yes, umami is true. I have had food so good it has made me cry physically because it has tasted that effing delicious. Unbelievable. Let me tell you something about this experience, too. When I was sitting there eating in this restaurant, you wouldn't believe the disrespect from these two ungrateful human beings sitting across the table with me. Because, you know, the ultimate dream is that I want to eat at Jiro's sushi place. You know, pretty much the god of sushi. He invented sushi. He is the god master king of sushi. And these two individuals in this restaurant, go ahead, you can ask Yasuda if you go to the restaurant. Ask him if he remembers some kid who pretty much brought up, like, yo, why are you disrespecting pretty much the god of sushi, the man who sacrificed his whole life to obtain something so great? Could you, ima could you imagine sitting there and listening to these two individuals who have probably never even dedicated half an iota of anything of their life to their skill or their talent or their ability or will to anything? And yet there they are, talking charmage. On a god him and big who's de dedicated his life to sushi. Like, unbelievable. He's a blatant disrespect. Just like Alex Jones. Blatant disregard for a human being right there. Like, sacrificing everything to obtain dreams over there. But there they are, crapping on him. Just unbelievable. And I was... I was getting in there about that breast milk. Because I was talking earlier, like... Why don't they serve breast milk anywhere instead of cow milk? Like... You saw that, that golden, sweet golden. I mean, think about it. If the, if the breast milk has all the nutrients and everything in it, why wouldn't you want to drink it? Imagine like what your skin would look like. I'm gonna do this experiment too. Don't. When I get the first chance, I'm gonna do the breast milk experiment experiment on myself and see like what my skin looks like. If I return back to youth, if if everything, you know, just just imagine it. All those nutrients in your body. In the Jerusalem Syndrome. 